Somewhere along the line, God smacked this guy in the head with his royal scepter, and he became the king. He had all of the rights because he had all of the property. Who owned England? The king. It was his country. He owned it. Okay? And, you know, he just happened to be born to the right person, you know, grew up in the right family, and they crowned him king. And everybody's going, okay, this is your land. Now, the king had all of the rights. All the people who live in England are subjects. They get privileges. If I'm the king, I'm going to give you the privilege of being the royal baker. And I'm going to let you be the royal blacksmith. And you can be the royal candlestick maker. It's a privilege. And I may not give it to anybody. You may be the only candle maker in the entire little shire. Isn't that great? No competition. Except if you piss me off, I'm going to take that privilege away from you. So the king had all of the power and would give out privileges to all of his subjects. Now, a lot of us got in boats, came to North America, and we started, you know, building our houses here. Eventually, we signed the Declaration of Independence. What is the Declaration of Independence? It is a letter to King George. And in so many words, we told King George to put it where the sun doesn't shine. We no longer work for you. We are sovereign and independent. Instead of all this, uh, instead of you getting all this uh, power from God and then giving it out to us willy nilly, we are going to cut out the middleman. We're not going to have a king anymore. God is going to endow us with the rights. We've got the unalienable rights directly from God. We don't need you anymore. And, furthermore, when we finished with the Revolutionary War, we got a lodial title. Who owned North America prior to the Revolutionary War? The king. He sent his people in the boats, and he set up a flag, said, I hereby declare this land property of the king. Well, guess what? We took our property and said it belongs to us. We have rights. We have property. First time in human history. Amazing. So, we've got the uh, Declaration of Independence, basically, which severs all of our ties with the king and makes us sovereign citizens. We've got all the power. Now, this is such a, an incredible change in the way that everything was going that they had to go back to England and explain it. Now, the uh, William Pitt was one of our guys, and he went back to England after the Constitution was uh, ratified, and he went to the House of Commons, basically Parliament, and he explained the way the situation was now. And he said, quote, The poorest man may, in his cottage, bid defiance to all the forces of the crown. Can you imagine living in England and bidding defiance to the king? What happens when you tell the king no? You end up being short. <laughs> you have no place for a hat. You never tell the king no. But here in the United States, people, the poorest man, may bid defiance to the king. Now we're talking about the uh, shack. It says it may be frail. Its roof may shake. The wind may blow through it. The storms may enter. The rain may enter, but the king of England cannot enter. All his forces dare not cross the threshold of the ruined tenement. So how much power does the king have in the United States? Zip. None. Nada. Who's in charge? We are. We have 285 million sovereign citizens in the United States. 285 million 
kings and queens. If I own my land, I make the law. This is Badnarik's law. Now, I only have a little tiny kingdom, you know, a couple thousand square feet. I can't come next door and make laws in your kingdom. That's your kingdom. You make the laws there. But here, I'm the king. It's good to be king. All right? Being sovereign doesn't mean, oh, I've got... I got this really great recliner so I can watch the uh, Super Bowl. It means you are sovereign. You have nobody to answer to but yourself and your queen standing next to you. You know whatever she says. But but that is basically the general idea. Now, the constitution says we the people ordain and establish the constitution. When we, the people, wrote the Constitution, we create Congress. Now, if we create Congress, who works for who? Do they work for us, or do we work for them? Now, as far as I can tell, they're supposed to work for us. Now, there is a, uh, a presumption of law that predates the Magna Carta. The Magna Carta was signed in 1215. So even before that, it was understood that the created can never be higher than the creator. If I make something, I've got to be more powerful than that because I created it. You know, my father used to tell me when I was a boy, I brought you into this world, I can take you out. That's how we should respond to Congress. Who, how did Congress show up? Has it always been there? No. We invented Congress. We, the people, created Congress. And if we don't like it, we can take them out. We can abolish Congress and start over from scratch if we, the people, feel that's what we need to do. We have sovereign power. Everybody say, it's good to be king. Come on, everybody. It's good to be king. You gotta at least say it. Doesn't that feel good? Don't you feel a little bit of your liberty and rights coming back? So, um, on page seven and eight, I have uh, gotten permission from uh, another patriot out on the internet who, uh, you know, prefers to remain uh, remain anonymous. But it is a two-page article on what is a sovereign individual. And I genuinely recommend that you read that, in fact, probably at the next break. But it goes on to say that there are different levels of sovereignty. The first level is mental sovereignty. You at least have to think of yourself as a king. You've got to wake up in the morning and go, it's good to be king. If you don't think it, you're never going to get the other kind. Now, the second form of sovereignty is financial sovereignty. You've got to get all of your stuff, all of your property, protected so that the bad guys can't take your property away. And then, eventually, physical sovereignty. That's where, I mean, we're actually there. Nobody's going to mess with you because they recognize that you're the king. We're not there yet. We are struggling to get there, but it is a struggle. And again, for some people, you may not want to struggle that hard just yet. But um, go through and read that at your earliest convenience. Again, maybe the, the first next break or uh, through lunch. And uh, that will give you a really good idea of what sovereignty is. So now, I have... I have a, a political question. I'm on page 9 of your handout at the top of the page. <coughs> the, the philosophical question is, if we the people are sovereign, do we have the authority to violently overthrow the government if necessary? Now that's, that's kind of a dangerous question even to ask because you're automatically labeled an extremist in a